Two terms you'll come across during your AWS studies, if you haven't already, are loose coupling and tight coupling. Loose coupling is a design principle that we use all the time, and most of the time we don't even realize it. Take another look at the diagram. Notice that the availability of our application doesn't depend solely on a single EC2 instance or a single database instance. Any one of these EC2 instances could go down and the application will still work. But how? What is the magic that makes that possible? Users access the application by browsing to a particular URL. When a user goes to the URL for the application, they are not directly connecting to an individual instance. No, they are instead connecting to the Elastic Load Balancer. When you tell your users, go to this URL, what URL are you giving them? You're actually giving them a URL that terminates at the Elastic Load Balancer and the ELB forwards or proxies the user to an individual instance. If that instance goes down, the ELB can proxy the user to a different instance. The ELB has effectively decoupled the URL from the individual instance. To put a finer point on it, the application's URL and the individual EC2 instances are loosely coupled. In loose coupling, there's a one-to-many relationship between components. One component depends on a collection of redundant components rather than depending on one specific component. In the case of our example application, the URL endpoint the user uses to access the application does not depend on a particular EC2 instance being up. As long as any instance is up, the URL will take the user to the application. There is a one-to-many relationship. One URL, many instances. The thing that makes this work, of course, is the ELB. Without the ELB, the only way a user could access the application is to use a URL that takes them directly to a single instance. In that case, the URL would be tied to a single instance. This is an example of tight coupling. There's a one-to-one -one relationship between the URL and the instance. In tight coupling, there's no redundancy. So if that instance goes down, the entire application goes down. Another way of looking at this is static versus dynamic. Tight coupling is static. One URL statically points to one instance. In loose coupling, the URL statically points to the ELB, but the ELB dynamically selects one instance from a collection of redundant instances. Another example of loose coupling involves the Elastic File System, or EFS. Each EC2 instance depends on the EFS service. Now, although EFS is a single service, it's composed of redundant components. EFS just hides all that redundancy. And this is true of all Elastic services, including EFS, ELB, S3, and so on. Whenever you use an Elastic service with another resource, such as an EC2 instance, the service and the resource are loosely coupled. The bottom line is that redundancy enables loose coupling, which improves availability. Again, redundancy alone does not help you with availability. You have to leverage that redundancy to improve availability, and the way you do that is through loose coupling. Now, by the way, loose coupling has a really interesting and important side effect. Loose coupling improves performance by letting you scale components up or down independent of one another. For example, suppose that your EC2 instances are underpowered. Let's say they don't have enough RAM or processing power. It takes a long time to process a video, so you need to upgrade your EC2 instance classes. But upgrading an instance class requires restarting the instance. Not a problem if you're using loose coupling. You just upgrade one instance at a time, take one instance offline to do the upgrade, and let the ELB route traffic to the remaining instances that are available. You can upgrade the instances one at a time without having to impact the application's availability. Performance and availability are inextricably linked. If your application performs really poorly, maybe it's ridiculously slow, that is essentially the same as it being unavailable. Again, availability is the percent of the time your application is behaving as you want it to. If the app is unacceptably slow, then chances are your users would view that as it simply being unavailable. The point is that poor performance leads to low availability, while good performance helps you maintain high availability.